Hey everybody, welcome back. Jess here for 3 Prong Gaming. And in today's episode, we are going to finish off where we left off in the last episode. And uh, we will finish the NPC looking for a job or applying for a job. So let's go ahead and get this started. Alright, like I said, in the last episode we worked on making the NPC apply for a job, um, if there is any available jobs, and uh, we weren't able to finish it up, so we're going to go ahead and finish that up today, and it uh, should be a relatively quick episode, you should know before I do how long this video is, I'm thinking it's probably only going to be about 10-15 minutes, we could start the AI today, but I'm thinking that we're just going to um, finish off where we left off. Uh, on Friday, and uh, we'll pick up the NPC uh, in the next episode, or uh, excuse me, the uh, AI in the next episode. So um, first and foremost, if you guys remember from the last episode, uh, when we set up our building struct, and we went into our building HUD, and I was really baffled and confused of why um, the building name corrected itself. I, I don't know. Anyway, so I logged into the editor today, and I got this. I was greeted with this error message saying that uh, there's a problem here and it, it had to do with the uh, building name in the HUD. So let's go ahead and let's fix that. So go into your building HUD real quick. If you have this issue, um, I, I don't know why you would have this issue. I don't know why I had this issue. But yeah, if you remember in the last episode, this like automatically set itself to know what the name of the building was. And it was really kind of weird. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and fix that right now so go ahead and just delete that pull off this get struct uh, where is it get building struct and let's just go ahead and split this pin right here and get the building struct name right there plug it in cool so that's all we had to do for that one so now that's fixed compile it and save it all right let's go ahead and close that out so right where we left off huh? yeah you can see my little notes right there I didn't uh, clear that out but yeah we're in the NPC blueprint right now um, back at uh, our main function here check for a job so where we left off was here at the true branch so being true if we are unemployed what exactly do we want to do well we want to look for a job in the building master if you remember we created let's go ahead or excuse me in the um, game state we created a function last time in uh, the game state called get available jobs. All right, so let's go ahead and grab that function, go ahead and plug it into the true. So now in this get available jobs, it's gonna return, is there a job available? Just giving us a yes or no, and it's gonna return the jobs available um, that came through. So let's go ahead and just right click jobs available and promote it to local variable. And let's call this one ava did I get available jobs underscore local. Okay, perfect. And go ahead now. We need a branch. Plug in the execution. Is job available? That's why we ran this through. Um, I mean, we could have just not did this is jobs available and ran off this right here to see is length greater than zero and run a branch. But I figured we'll just run that back in the um, game state. So that's why I did it like so. OK, hook in the execution right there. So if a job is not available, control W, let's go ahead and drop a return note in there and hook it up to the false um, search successful. We'll leave that as false. Okay, but if it's true, then what we need to do is we need to hire the employee, right? So we need another new function, and this will be in the building master. Um, let's go ahead and compile this just in case. Um, go into the building master, and let's go ahead and create a new function. We will call this one hire employee. Okay, so what do we need from this? We need to pass in the NPC so we know who to add to the uh, employee list here. So create a new input for this function. We'll just call it NPC and it needs to be of type NPC 
BP reference. All right, so let's right click on the NPC and promote to a local variable. And we'll just call this applicant underscore local. Okay, go ahead and slide that over. So now we need to right click, do one more redundant check here. We've checked this a couple times, but now this is right before we hire. So let's get employees. It's a function here and here. You could just drag it in from here if you wanted to. Um, pull that up here. So now what we need to do is we need to get the building struct. So uh, let's just go struct, get building struct. This is off of ourself. Remember we're in the building master right here. So go ahead and pull off of this. Let's break this out. So now we just need to do one final check here and we need to make sure that our number of employees is less than integer integer max employees. Make sure you don't do the equals there because if we can only have four employees and we do have four employees, we don't want it to return true because if you put it at less than or equal to, then it would return true. That's not what we want. So go ahead and drop in a branch right here and uh, hook in the condition. So if that condition is true, then we'll need to do something. Let's go ahead and run off the false because the false is always easier. So let's go ahead and we're going to need two outputs. First one, we'll call this one was hired. This will be a Boolean. And then this one will be building. This will just return um, the instance of itself so that uh, we can place it in the MPC. Let's see, building master BP. So that way we can place it on the employee and uh, know where we work whenever we need that reference. So was hired false off of the false building. We'll just leave that empty as well. Okay. So, but if it's true, what we need to do is now is we need to get this array of employees right here. Get it. Now we need to add unique. And then what we need to add unique is the applicant local. Just go ahead and drop that in there. So now he becomes a list of employees that will check. And that's where all this comes into handy. So go ahead and plug in the execution and grab your return node, right? Come on. There we go. Control C, Control V. I don't know. Sometimes Control W doesn't work. Um, was hired. Yes. And then we want to return an instance of ourself. And then just plug that into the building right there. Compile it and save it. That should be it for that one. All right. So let's go ahead and jump back into our MPC BP. We shouldn't need this building master anymore in this episode. Um, and back in here. Now we need to grab that function off of the um, building master we just did. So how do we do that? Grab your available jobs local. Let's get it. And then let's just go ahead and remember I said in the last episode, what we're going to do is we're going to have the NPC randomly select a job from the available jobs. So let's go ahead and grab this select length. If I can spell length, there it is. Okay. So now we take this number. Now remember, arrays are zero based index. So meaning that the first entry in the array is actually index zero. So if you have five jobs, five available jobs in this reference, then it will be labeled zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. So what we need to do now to get a random number to be able to pick a random, uh, index out of here for a job, we need to take off this length and we just need to hit minus integer minus integer. So we just need to subtract one. So, cause remember this length just tells you how many are in here. So in my example of having five, this would return five, but we're going to pull an index out of here. So if we were to return a five, it would give us an error. Okay. So that's why we subtract one from here. So now go ahead and just right click in the graph and do random integer in range. Okay. Plug that in, leave the minimum at zero, and then the maximum will be the maximum amount of um, available jobs that we have. Okay. So now we'll use this value to grab our available jobs again. 
get that and then pull off of there and type in get and we'll get the index of our random integer right there okay so now it'll just randomly select a job depending on how many you have um, so even if you only have one job then well it's just going to grab that one because a minimum range of zero and zero is it's going to grab us zero all right so now let's go ahead and pull off of this and type hire employee that function we just created plug in the execution and I'll clean all that up in just a little bit and I'll add all my little notes don't forget you should always add um, descriptions of your functions so that way you know trust me you're gonna get down the road and you're gonna look back at something and go what did I create that for so go ahead and make sure you do that so go ahead and right click on your building tab right here and let's promote it to local variable we'll call this one building underscore local okay and then we need to pull off of this and run a branch. Were we hired? Yes or no? Okay. So if we weren't hired, then what we need to do is we need to grab our return node here. Control W. See, now it worked that time. Control W. Search successful. False. Because we weren't successful in acquiring a job. Okay. So off the true. Now what we need to do, this is again where having um, structs or kind of a pain in the butt is because now we've got to set it so go ahead and pull out my profile let's get it and pull off this hit break and then grab the building local which is where we're hired from let's get it pull off of this and get its building struct where is it get building struct and then break that as well okay so now we need to set my profile so go ahead and grab my profile again pull it in here as a set okay and then backwards drag off of my profile and select make mpc profile struct okay so now what we need to do is just take from our profile, the things that we're not setting, currently setting in this function, and plug them in. Name, we're not setting his name, we're not setting his sex or gender. But his occupation type, we are, and his place of employment, we are. So his place of employment will be the building reference. Okay? And the occupation type, pull off the occupation type right there because remember even though right now we only have construction we don't know what kind of available jobs there will be in this area right here so that's why we set all these um, instances of occupation type and building reference and then we set it to the my profile so now we've got all of it stored on the mpc of where he works and what kind of job he has what kind of job he has is going to play a very important role when we do our ai okay so let's go ahead and plug in the execution to the set right there. And then lastly, grab your return node, control W, plug this in. Was our search successful? Yes, it was. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so that's it. I just had to think for a second there. Um, yeah, because our occupation type now will switch. It'll go in this case, all we have is construction. So it'll go from unemployment to construction. So then this function won't run again because we are checking, are we equal to unemployment? All right, so let's go ahead and compile and save that. Now we really don't have a place to, to run this because this check for job, this is gonna be our main one, our main function. We're gonna check for a job, but all this is gonna be ran from the AI. So like I said, we could start the AI. Um, let me just open it up right here so you guys can uh, uh, just kind of remember where we're at, I suppose, because it's been a little while since we've been into our AI. All right, so this is it. This is all we have right now. We've got, um, if we drop an NPC in the world, he's just going to come straight down, go into the working tab, um, and then do construction. we got a random weight right here. Yeah, so he's going to go through all that. I'm not going to go into details for that right now. Try to keep this short and sweet. Like I said, we're sitting, we're coming up right about to 15 minutes. That's perfect. It's been a while since I had a nice short episode. Um, yeah, so we round that off. So in the next episode, yeah, we will dive in here. We will do the AI and uh, start working on the behavior so um, we can test everything that we've done in the last three or four episodes. We're going to be able to finally test that 
Um, hopefully in the next episode, we'll be able to test it. If not, within the next couple episodes, but we're at least definitely going to jump into this behavior tree in the next episode. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you learned even just a little bit off of this, um, please do me a favor. Go down and hit that like button. It helps me out a ton. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe while you're down there liking it. Remember, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I won't spam your feeds. And uh, it's just to keep you up to date on anything that may or may not be going on as it relates to this. And I may start posting some tips and things like that on my Facebook just for my Facebook uh, subscribers or likers or followers, or whatever you want to call them. All right. Check out one of the other videos that might be playing on the screen right now. And until next time, peace.